So Alex, why don't you walk us through this first demo, which was concentrated on this new NVIDIA Mega Geometry technology. Yeah, um, just as a little preface before I describe it initially, we were in a room with a lot of these demos running. And in comparison, for example, we just had a video talking about AMD FSR 4, or mm. the <laughs> research project. And uh, that I said it was a contextless demo. Uh, the demos that we saw here at NVIDIA in this very large room with a whole, like a whole bunch of them, I'm talking about 20 plus different demos, the most amount of tech stuff and technical um, features that I've ever seen ever at one moment. And uh, these were not contextless at all. Each station uh, had one or two engineers and or artists talking about their work. And there were industry giants in there. Uh, Chris Wyman was there. Um, you also had uh, uh, Aaron Lafon. You there was um, uh, John Spitzer was there, like huge Nvidia superstars that kind of worked on a lot of the core tech uh, in really big ways that we've seen over the years, like really big breakthroughs uh, and on the research side. And they were just there to talk with us and. I had really great conversations with all of them, which enlightened each, and there was a lot of other people there too, whose names I'm just currently forgetting at the moment, but basically each demo was enlightened by questions being answered and uh, just general chit chat about what we're seeing on screen. Uh, because a lot comes up and that's how I got all the info I could, not just seeing it, but also talking with people, which I think yeah. context is important always to giving these demos, right? Yeah, they provided some really incredible context and I have to say, there's a bit of a, a fangirl moment sitting <laughs> in a room with probably the highest concentration of graphics engineers, like yeah. top end graphics engineers, uh, this side of the NVIDIA headquarters, I'd have to imagine yeah. at any given time. It was awesome. So it was really exciting and there was a lot of really, really compelling demos. So why don't we start off with this mega geometry demo, which depicted this great giant animated flying kind of vaguely Asiatic dragon thing yep. flying through some environment. Yeah. yeah, pretty compelling stuff. And like a rock precipice with a guy wearing uh, like an Asiatic hat. I don't know the right. name of the hat, actually. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Kind uh, of a straw. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. you know, like if you've ever seen Raiden, uh, like both from uh, the John Carpenter film, uh, <laughs> uh, Big Trouble in Little China, as well as the character himself and the mythological character, kind of like that kind of style hat, straw yeah. hat. Uh, really beautiful demo. And so Mega Geometry, in general, based upon what we saw here and what we're looking at on screen right here, is NVIDIA's way to try and solve a very important issue in ray tracing APIs and in ray tracing in general. And basically, uh, ray tracing has the problem where there is a large acceleration structure for every bit of geometry on screen. And uh, the things that are easy to build this acceleration structure for are those static things uh, that aren't going to be moving and aren't going to be changing. But the things that are moving, like dynamic geometry uh, and characters, things that where the geometry deforms, uh, those are expensive. But usually a lot of stuff on screen isn't animating at once. It's usually just characters and stuff like that. Maybe you'd see vegetation moving and such. But a hidden cost to every game that has ray tracing is the fact that modern games use level of detail. And well, level of detail has been around for a long time, but their exclusive is almost every object in a game world will have multiple levels of LOD, like LOD zero all the way out to five, six, seven, or even 10. And that every single time a new LOD is loaded in, and if the geometric representation as well in the ray tracing acceleration structure is changed at the same time, each time one of those changes occurs, an entire rebuild of the acceleration structure at that point has to occur for that thing. And that is an expensive pro process in itself, costs on the GPU side, uh, as well as there's a CPU related cost. Um, the, this is especially important now when we now have Nanite. Nanite, or even more complex, uh, like mesh shading and stuff like that, because the potential of level of detail changing it constantly is always there. And as you move through a world with Nanite, uh, every single frame could have just hundreds, you know, thousands of LOD changes. And it becomes completely impractical to start doing full rebuilds on the GPU and the CPU related costs of all these things as well. Mm -hmm. It is just unfeasible. That's why Nanite relies on, when you do hardware ray tracing, it relies on what is called the fallback mesh, right. uh, lower percentage <laughs> representation of the, the real world Nanite mesh. Um, and yeah, 
there's a lot in there, but basically this is their way to try and solve it for RTX GPUs. Uh, and it requires a new API, essentially, running through NV API. And uh, it, what it does is it is a streaming scheme and a new way to, like, it's actually not too different from what I heard from DXR 1.0, but it is enough different at a point to allow for the quick streaming in of clusters, you know, um, clusters of geometry uh, at any one second, all the time, without doing like full super expensive rebuilds. Uh, and it allows for a lot of crazy stuff that we're seeing on this dragon here, as well as on the other character kind of lifting their arms up to them. This is a demo of something that has never been done in real time before. It is a fully tessellated, deformed mesh animating at a one or even smaller triangle per pixel ratio um, of this dragon. And another thing to really stress about this, there are diffuse textures on it, but there are no normal maps on this, uh, this dragon at all. There are no normal maps. This is doing something that is uh, really ridiculous. It is no normal maps. So the, all the detail you're getting from here on the, on the mesh itself is uh, all coming from real geometric detail that is changing every one second. And when you flip over to the wireframe mode, you can really get a sense of that, about how much geometry is just on these things. Uh, there is, it is so, it is white noise. It's basically white noise when you look at it. There's so much geometry no matter what you do. And there were, you know, on the demo, they could control the level of tessellation. Uh, they can control they could control so much actually in the demo. They were turning off like the, the, the um, uh, yeah, the turning off the tessellation just to the base mesh essentially because the, the tessellation is actually done via like a, like a height map kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it led to unparalleled levels of geometric detail. And another part of this that this is doing too is because they have such really amazing cost for per triangle now, uh, and also like a reduced cost uh, in other aspects, uh, like the the size on disk is smaller as a result. In, as a result of that, um, they could do for the first time also that we've seen in a while. This was also primary rays were being path traced. Sorry, this is another technical detail <laughs> where uh, games that have been fully ray traced so far that we've talked about on the channel, things like Alan Wake Two, Cyberpunk. Um, Indiana Jones, uh, they do the lighting in a ray traced way, uh, where you know, like first uh, hit lighting and as well as subsequent bounces are done via ray tracing. But the actual like view matrix, looking into the world, deciding which geometry is on screen and which one is not, that is actually still done primarily through rasterization. And here we were actually looking at primary rays being traced. So that means. Uh, they didn't do it for the demo, but crazy stuff could be done like that way. Like they could distort the screen. They could do crazy FOVs. They could do a lot of things like uh, ray traced or path trace scopes where you would look into a scope and the scene would bend behind it. You know, like tracing primary rays, we haven't seen it in any of the full ray trace AAA games. The only time we saw it actually has been in stuff like uh, Quake 2 RTX and right. Minecraft RTX where they did do some of those things. But in any of the full RT games yet, we haven't seen that yet. So this demo was doing a way of showing geometry that has never been done in real time in a game. And it was using like open sub div as well to do it. Like this thing was nuts. And <laughs> they, were, they were showing stuff like on the one character's hat, they would get right into it and show like, yeah, this isn't like, we don't even need to do alpha cutouts anymore. This is just all geometry that is uh, subdividing in real time as you get closer. And you could probably see my face. I'm, I'm going nuts. <laughs> this demo was insane. Um, and I think that like my main takeaway here is that we're finally, this is of all, there's a lot in this, in this, these demos that were constantly mind blowing, but this one is gonna be also a huge performance win for the future, this is an API difference. It is currently limited to NV API, but this is gonna be something that NVIDIA is gonna be working with, with Microsoft to get it as a standardization of some sort. And we'll see how the other IHVs uh, decide to roll with this type of technology, because uh, they're all gonna probably come up with their own implementation, just like there's 
you know, differences in implementations of ray tracing between Intel and AMD. And it, it is a huge, this is a huge deal. Like they have their own, this was shown in a custom render right here, but the, the principle applies as well. It could easily be applied to Nanite. It could be applied, it's going to be applied to Alan Wake 2. They're gonna use it to like massively accelerate um, the foliage tracing in that game, mm -hmm. uh, which is all done by a skin geometry. So it's gonna to lead to speed ups. Now this does run across all RTX, but it doesn't mean that this scene would run across all RTX cards quickly because <laughs> there's so much geometry to trace against here. There's a reason why Blackwell ran, ran it well. Right. Uh, but this demo was insane. I don't know. What did you think of it, Oliver? I mean, I thought it was just incredible. It reminded me of like what you see often in CG where they basically say, oh yeah, we're, you know, we're rendering this character on screen and nowhere, eschewing the use of normal maps as you often see nowadays in high-end path trace CG. But the idea that you would actually achieve that within a game render with all the limits of having to achieve that in real time um, and, and have that level of geometry and have that level of subdivisibility to the image. Mm -hmm. just, I just thought it was just astounding looking. And I mean, the lighting and everything they had set up, I mean, it just looked like a next level render of something that I've I've never really seen before in a, in a title, and it's something that wasn't even on my radar in terms of something that would be achieved <laughs> yeah. in real time. It just it's, it's just super impressive. I think it even wrinkles in the, one of the characters' faces. It's just all stuff. That, like, <laughs> yeah, that blows you away because you kind of zoom in and, and you zoom out, and it never you never really get that impression that there's a level of detail that you're not reaching within that real-time render. So that was super impressive. Yeah, and it, it's it's really the next step. And this is already going to be coming to games very soon with Alan Wake 2. But this demo here with like the path trace primary rays and whatnot, uh, this is more, this is like the kind of showing of the entire proof of concept of what it can be. Uh, and a couple of the demos were like that, right? They, they're saying like, this is the nth degree goal. A AAA game may not be doing this because there's disk space considerations for a lot of stuff. You don't just want you know, you also have real-time performance considerations. Not everyone's running on RTX 5090, et cetera. So this is like the future of rendering, but it's running in real time and it's this way it's gonna be soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was, I think that was like really the standout demo that I know that as soon as we walked into that room that Alex made a beeline for I that ran demo. to it. <laughs> he ran to it, he ran to it. He was drawn to it like a moth to a flame.